Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to r slash Entitled People, where people believe they're the center of the universe and they can do what they want, when they want. And in this episode, guys, OP's Karen mom decides to tattoo her own name on OP one day. And trust me, it's way worse than it sounds, and it only gets worse from there, guys. I hope you enjoy the stories today, don't shake your heads too hard, and as always, you can send or link your post right here. So today, I went shopping at a member's warehouse store. I was in line waiting to check out, and this total stranger of a woman asked me about an item that I have in my shopping cart, which is breakfast bars that my husband really likes. I tell her that they're good and my husband's favorite. She then says that she is going to get them, so I start telling her where they're located in the store. And with that she says, ugh, that's too far. Well since you know where they are, I'll just take these and you can go get some more. She then proceeds to grab them out of my cart, and I tell her no, you're not taking those. And just as I tell her that, the person who helps expedite the checkout process comes up and starts getting all the barcodes turned upright. The Karen then tells her that she's getting my breakfast bars. And again, I say no. The employee directs her to where she can get her own box, and Karen literally stomps her foot and says, Why can't I have these? The employee tells her that they're in my cart and that I'm checking out right now. The employee did have someone come over and take Karen to where the breakfast bars were located. I did get the employee's name, and I left her a positive review on the website. Guys, I'm just gonna be totally honest with you, I've read so many of these stories, and I'm still surprised at the things that some people do. It's far, you know where they are, so I'll take these from your cart and you go get another box. If I were in Opie's shoes guys, and the Karen started stomping her feet and throwing a mini tantrum, I'd have been like, you want these ma'am? Fine, go fetch, and just toss it across the store. I worked for an orthopedic surgeon who constantly ate people's lunches and he would leave $10 on the fridge. The guy really loved leftover home cooked meals. After he would eat our lunches, he would say, I don't get lunches off. I have to work to keep paying your salary. You can go buy another lunch. I hated the guy so much, but I got paid a lot. He was fresh out of his internship and residency and he thought he was above everyone. We complained to the office manager. She went to the doctor and said we were all pissed about it. The doctor told her to deal with it. So she told me if the doctor decided to eat one of our lunches, we could have the office manager just order us something. And this was amazing. There were two people besides me that had family and kids, so we always brought leftovers. If he ate my food, I ordered from the most expensive steak place in town. I would get appetizers, a 22-ounce steak, three sides, a salad, and dessert. I would eat the salad, and the rest went home. Of course, there were plenty of leftovers to take to work the next day. The rest of the staff was doing the same, ordering full chickens, four to five different Chinese dishes, spending hundreds of dollars to replace stolen meatloaf sandwiches and day-old soups and spaghetti. The office manager went along with it. After all, he said we could order what we wanted if he took our lunch. It went on for two months, until dickhead doctor caught on. From then on, he had the office manager order him a lunch. I did miss trading off a cold pork chop and Spanish rice for prime rib and all the fixings though. Yeah, that sounds like a fair trade guys, entitled doctor eats your lunch, you should have it replaced, right? And honestly, I'd never expect a doctor of all people to steal lunches because, you know, most of the time, lunch thieves are too cheap to pay for their own food, but this guy's rolling in money and he just happened to love home cooked meals. So yesterday, I was watching a movie with my mom and my baby brother, and she asked if I want something to drink. I say yes, and she brings over a cup of juice. The rest is, I don't even remember, there's no blur, there's nothing. All I remember is taking one sip and then blank. I wake up with a sore arm and I don't think anything of it until it starts to hurt. That's when I look down and I can't believe my eyes. My mom's name is tattooed on my entire arm. I could tell it was real ink because my mom works as a tattoo artist and I've seen plenty of them. That's when I jumped out of bed and ran towards her room to confront her. My mom was so carefree about it, she just laughed and told me it was a gift and to just be happy. I say to her, how can I be happy when you permanently labeled me with your name without my consent? After the initial shock, I told her to take me to a tattoo laser removal place. She laughed in my face and said that I should be grateful, as many people would love to have their mom's names tattooed on them. 
I was so upset. I couldn't believe what was happening, and I ran back to my room. I sat on my bed thinking, thinking how my life got to this point. I couldn't come to an answer because her behavior is so irrational. I then proceeded to look up information on laser removal. It said there needed to be several sessions, and each session costs a lot of money. I went back to her room and demanded she pay for it because I didn't ask for this. She gave me a firm no, and she said that I will learn to appreciate it. I thought about calling the police on her, but I changed my mind. I'm a dependent on her after all, and she knows that. I don't want to live with this for the rest of my life. I feel like ripping the skin off. I'm so mad right now. What do I do? Guys, I would be freaking furious if I were in Opie's shoes, guys. Like, mom is a freaking psycho. Spiking her daughter's drink to knock her out to tattoo her own name on her. Like, who the heck does that? And to make it worse, she thinks it's a laughing matter. And for all of you who are thinking, go to the police, don't you worry, guys. Opie comes back with multiple updates to this post. But this person says it best. This person says, You need to call the police. The evidence is on your arm. If you're an adult, you can sue. If you're a minor, you will be provided for. If you do not, she will take this as permission to do worse. Much worse. She thinks she owns your entire body. I want you to think about the worst thing that could happen to your body. She's okay with mutilating you, which is a physical injury that results in a permanent change to your appearance. With that said, guys, here are the updates. Update number one. So I listened to the advice that most of you have been giving me, and I called CPS and law enforcement. They instantly started an investigation. The first thing the officer did was take me to the hospital to get tested. They took some blood and urine, and they brought my mom in for questioning. My mom kept telling them that this whole thing is a misunderstanding, and it's not as serious as they make it out to be, and that they're wasting time. I think she called a lawyer and stopped talking to the cops. I am currently staying with neighbors until things calm down. I have my little brother with me as well. Thank you for all the support. I needed this encouragement because this was the hardest and scariest thing that I've ever done. And I'm so glad I did. It's like a big weight has been lifted off my shoulders. Update number two. So me and my little brother are safe at the neighbor's house and my mom just got released on bail. After her questioning, the police received the lab results proving my story. I was given drugs and then she took advantage by tattooing her name on my arm. An officer came by and told us that my mom's been warned to stay away from us for the time being, until her court date. The district attorney's office has officially charged her, and I want justice. She will not get away with this. She's definitely gonna lose that tattoo license of hers, and I hope she gets some time behind bars. And another thing, I could have died from the drug she used on me. The doctor said there was rohypnol in my system, a common drug used by sickos to sedate people. Many of you mentioned that it was a possible drug she used on me, and you were right. It's prescribed to people who struggle with sleeping. I sleep just fine, which explains why it knocked me out so quickly. I'm still in shock that she did this to me, and I'm staying strong for my brother, but it really gets hard whenever I look at my arm and see her name. I cover the tattoo with a big bandage, temporarily. I'll let the skin heal as you've all advised. I personally need it removed as soon as possible, though. I also can't have it covered up with something else because all it would do is remind me of this pain. Anyways, thank you all for your kind words and overwhelming support. It means a lot. Update number three. Me and my brother are at a safe house owned by this nice lady. CPS is having us live here temporarily while they continue investigating. I'm glad they didn't separate us since there's a couple of other kids here too. And I've read a bunch of scary stories online where siblings are split upon relocation. Luckily, there is enough room in the house for all of us. It's comfortable here, and I like it. Well, it was comfortable until my mom suddenly showed up and caused problems. Now, you may be wondering how she found the address. I was curious about that as well. Well, it turns out that she secretly linked my phone to this app installed on my phone, giving away my exact location this entire time. She bought me the phone last year, and I never knew about the app until now. I heard yelling downstairs, and my mom was arguing with the homeowner, saying, These are my kids. You have no right to keep them here. I called the police as she continued yelling and screaming, and they got there within minutes. She was handcuffed, and also charged for trespassing, and maybe some other things too. This is crazy. It's so hard to believe it all. Sometimes I feel like I'm having a nightmare, hoping to wake up. But this is as real as it gets. Now, some of you have also asked if my dad's in the picture. He's not. I've never met him. I do have an aunt from my dad's side of the family that lives a few hours away. 
I told CPS, but they couldn't get a hold of her, and I haven't visited in years, so maybe that's a dead end. In the meantime, I guess we'll live here until things are sorted. I expect my mom to stay put in jail this time, waiting for the court date coming up. She deserves to be locked up for what she did to me, and about the tattoo, I'm letting the skin heal and I'm taking good care of it. I do intend to have it removed in the near future when I can afford it. This is all for now. Thank you for the support. Update number 4. My mom is facing justice. It's court day. It's finally happening. She's gonna stand in front of a judge and get verbally slapped around back to reality. She'll learn that her behavior was so far out of bounds and illegal. I heard she even tried to postpone it because she knows it's over. Me and my little brother are safe at the house provided by CPS. Everything's cool right now and I'm actually happy. I can't imagine what excuses her and her lawyer are gonna try to stir up. There's no escaping this and I'm super excited right now. I was asked to testify and I told my side of the story. The judge took all the information into account and she made a deal by pleading guilty. I guess her lawyer convinced her somehow. I expected her to claim innocence and blame others like a narcissist would. My mom was sentenced to 6 months in prison with 2 years probation. Update number 5. So my mom's been in prison for a few months now and I haven't been contacted by her until today. And of course, she began the letter by talking about herself and how terrible it is in prison. She then said that I'm cold-hearted for not visiting or calling and that I did this to her. I just sat there shocked at how oblivious she is of her actions, even after facing punishment behind bars. The letter continued with her mentioning how the tattoo was an act of love and that I should not remove it. Well, too late for that because I have already began laser removal treatments. It's gonna take a while as it's a long and expensive process, and my mom concluded by asking for my forgiveness. No way, there's 0% chance that I'm forgiving her for permanently damaging our family. My little brother and I are all we have left. She's no longer in the picture and we will survive and thrive without her. I do have to admit that I'm feeling more and more anxious as her release date approaches in about 3 months. But don't worry, she doesn't know the address of the foster home we're staying at. But I just don't know what she'll try to do once she's free. So that update concludes the wild few months that Opie's been through, guys, and wow. And of course, a lot of people did suggest Opie get a restraining order against her crazy mom. And also to show the authorities the letter she sent, as she should not have been contacting Opie at all. With that said, though, guys, I just hope Opie and her brother are living an awesome life now, and I do commend Opie for calling the authorities on her own mom. Because being a minor and being dependent on your mom like OP said and going through all that is freaking terrifying. Guys, let me know what you think though. If this happened to you, are you doing what OP did? So I've lurked here for a while, but I never really thought any of my stories qualified. Until I remembered one from 2008 or 2009. I can't exactly remember anymore. Here is a quick backstory to keep it from being too boring. I had recently lost my job, like most people at the time, and I was having to do odd jobs on Craigslist just to get by. I recruited a friend to help me do various odd jobs, since he was also in a similar situation. So with that, we pooled our resources and cobbled together enough equipment to do landscaping work, along with other odd jobs that you'd hire manual labor for. We were also both young, like early 20s, and we didn't know when we were getting scammed or fooled. So I got a call on one of our ads to go do some landscaping work for a guy who happened to live about a mile away. And with that I thought, awesome, we won't have to spend much on gas, but we will have to sacrifice our Labor Day weekend to do the job since it was a large job. The guy asked us to put in a raised bed that essentially wrapped around his entire house. Imagine a house in a newly built subdivision that has a smallish yard and a few trees. He wanted the bed to be built with landscaping bricks and he wanted us to copy a style his neighbor had done. I thought, cool, no problem. At this point we tried to discuss payment, but he keeps giving us the runaround. Now because we were in a desperate situation, we got fooled into doing the work with no agreed upon labor fee or contract. This was our mistake, one that was never made again though. We were just happy to have some work. We spent two full days working our asses off in the middle of summer, not really knowing what we were getting paid. We were using our tools, truck, and time grinding away, but we kept wondering why this guy was acting so shady. 
Finally on day three, nearing the end of the day, I'm fed up with the runaround, and I knock on the door and confront the guy about payment. The guy starts getting all aggressive, screaming at us that we have a poorly run business, we're unprofessional doing this, and because of this, he should get everything done for free, which immediately escalates the situation. So I grab my friend and bring him into the argument, and after 30 minutes of arguing, the guy decides that he'll pay us $70 for the work because it looks like a $70 job. Take it or leave it. Yep, the guy was paying us 70 effing dollars to split between two guys after three days of labor. Cool, right? We load up our trucks with the tools and then we wait for the guy to come out with our cash. The a-hole actually comes out with a huge wad of cash. It looked like a few thousand dollars worth and he proceeds to count out and hand over $70. So we collect our money and grab our last item, a tarp. We had been using a really large tarp to put weeds, grass, and extra dirt on to make our lives easier since we didn't have a wheelbarrow at the time. Now, the accumulated mound on this thing had to have been 4 feet high. We drag it into the middle of his front yard and we dump the tarp. This is the first FU. The guy was begging us not to do it, but he could pound sand at this point. We then load up and peel out because, you know, angry youngsters. My mom's friend was a real landscaper. She heard our story and she offered up some excellent advice if we want to get back at the guy. She told us to take the backpack sprayers we had, fill them up with a warm salt water mix, and then ride over and spray his yard. We planned to do this about two months later. When the time came, we executed the plan late at night, around 2 a.m. We parked down at the pool parking lot and we walked to his house and absolutely bombed the dude's yard with salt water. We came back about a month later and everything was dead. Flowers, grass, small trees, all of it. If you mess with guys that are doing your yard work, F your yard. Yeah, that guy was definitely an idiot. Let's screw over the people who know where you live. That's always a great idea. And I don't know about you guys, but I would be ripping out everything I did on top of salting that guy's lawn. My dad has always been really controlling in our family. He's the type to get what he wants, when he wants, and when I graduated high school, he wanted me to be a construction worker, and that's what I did. He tried to control my life in every aspect, and I hated it. I got myself fired after six months. My dad was severely angry with me, and he said I was good for nothing and going nowhere in life. I took a job cutting meat for $12 an hour, and I saved up over $10,000 in one year and went to university. When he found out that I was going to university, he got jealous. He accused me of thinking I was better than him, as he barely passed high school and he's got no post-secondary, and he refused to give me a single penny to help. In fact, he would become the biggest obstacle in my life. He makes over $100,000 a year, and he's got no debts and no mortgage. I paid for my first three years of school in cash, working 20 hours a week while in school, collecting my pharmacy prerequisites, and I worked two full-time jobs each summer to save up enough cash to pay tuition. At one point, I was $2,000 in debts, working 30 hours a week, taking an extremely heavy course load, and suffering from IBS and complications from that, and still received no help. My dad would actively try to sabotage me by providing me with no space to study at home and emotionally, physically, and verbally abused me and my mother at home, getting angry when he saw me studying. Sometimes I would be studying for finals and he would ask me to rewire the basement for him and go completely ballistic on me when I would say that I don't have time but will gladly help after finals. Apparently not dropping my studies to install a three-way switch is disrespectful. After my mom divorced him and moved out in September 2017, it got even worse. I was getting my last three prerequisite classes to apply to pharmacy school, and he would yell at me every day, sabotage me, and watch me struggle to afford to feed myself and pay for gas to get to school, and he would still offer no help. I'm only 23 years old, and I've grown a lot of gray hairs in the last three years from stress. One night, while I was playing Xbox after writing a midterm, he comes down and starts screaming in my face and going completely ballistic for no reason, threatening to beat the crap out of me. My dad's a 6 foot 2, 250 pound Hulk, and I'm only 5 foot 9 and nowhere near capable of defending myself from someone like him. He just wouldn't stop threatening me and screaming in my face. That's when I threaten to call the cops on him and he starts freaking out even more. 
so I drove away in the night and stayed at my grandparents' house overnight. I skipped school the next day, waited for him to go to work, and came home with my grandpa's SUV and loaded all my belongings up and moved out. He's tried to contact me dozens of times now by sending random pictures of things or random messages like what's up, but never any apologies or admittance of doing anything wrong. I haven't replied to any messages once. My last memory of him is backing out of my driveway and calling him a piece of crap and then disappearing into the night. I finished my last prerequisite in April and I applied to pharmacy school. And this week, I found out I was accepted. I've done this almost entirely on my own, with absolutely zero support from anyone. I'm the first person in my family to ever go to university. I'm 23 years old and have a buttload of gray hair from everything I had to go through. And this is the most proud I've ever been of myself. Going nowhere my ass, dad. And that's how you do it, guys. Success is the greatest revenge of all, and I'm so freaking proud of OP for doing this all on their own, despite dad being a huge a-hole and a huge obstacle. It really goes to show that you can achieve anything you put your mind to, guys, and I really wanted to share this post with you because it really made me smile. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode today. I hope you didn't shake your heads too hard. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, I will link it right here. A Karen boss dares OP to quit saying they're useless and regrets it big time. Go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.